I am going to talk about direct product decoration, its importance and how it affects uh, the image quality and uh, speed by using different waveforms. Few words about industrial inkjets. Industrial inkjet started in 2005 and since then the company has grown steadily and became become the world leader in industrial inkjet applications. We are authorized sales and technical support for Kodikam in Alta inkjet products and also we uh, are the global supplier of high quality print engines. My presentation consists of two parts. First part, I'm going to talk about KM print heads, IAJ print engines, and some brief um, background for um, various industrial uh, market. Then I'm going to discuss about the waveform. And the second part, I'm going to talk about uh, some customer applications. Konica Minolta manufactures various products, 1024, i-series, 1800i, and MEMS uh, print head. The first three products are based on shear mode technology. The latest one is uh, bending mode technology. For the current investigation, I have used the 1024i series, particularly the 6 picoliter print head. <coughs> IAJ manufactured around 150 print head, uh, sorry, 150 print engines. 80% of them are in production based on 1024 and 1024i series uh, print heads. The KM1800i. Uh, Mono print, high resolution print engine was at Label Expo last week, uh, which can print fine um, font size from 2 to 2.5, and it's very good for printing lab, uh, barcodes. IAJ print engines are compact, versatile. For applications for direct print, uh, for printing out the cards and labels for using belt system, and then you can integrate into existing press um, uh, for reel to reel applications. We can print from 36 to 500 millimeter print width and speed up to 200 meters per minute, and we can print across white UV varnish and security inks. <coughs> this is a brief chronology of inkjet in, a, in industrial market. You can see coding and uh, marking started by mid 1980s. Then it became piezo oil based system. Then high quality security and pharmaceutical applications came with the low migration inks. If you look at wide format, it started off with a solvent based system and then later on UV and high quality inks came but one or two print engines were built per year and they were moved to mainly based on Chinese system. Ceramics started off with metal salt, then pigmented ink came in but majority of them moved to China. Labels again started off with toner based system and then it became wider and faster by inkjet. Product decoration again started with multi pass system. Single pass system came, uh, became uh, um, popular around 2005 and that is where IAJ specialized. Other development pro uh, projects like solar cells, LCD, they're all still under development. All the white space is for analog based system and the yellow is there are there are new developments at that stage and not many print engines were built but the blue is more inkjet. So what I'm saying is the coding and marking took a long while to mature whereas digital 
took less time. I'm going to show you a, a summary of how the complexity versus profit for various uh, markets uh, in the in inkjet industry. You can divide this into four sections, easy money, deserved money, uh, crowded and competitive, and then dangerous. If you look at easy money, security inks, you can see the complexity is very low, the profit, you can make high profit. If you look at mono labels, coding and marking, color print, ceramics, as well, complexity is very low, but lots of people are working in that field, so the profit, the return is low. Deserved money, direct to product, textile, packaging, laminates and wallpaper. You can see the complexity is very high, but there are a lot of work need to be done, still you can make money. Direct product decoration is under high complexity because of the 3D parts involved. You need to prove that you can print faster and you can improve the image quality as well. If you look at the price, the inkjet price is almost four times compared to a screen or flexor. So we are using only for short runs because of the cost. But if you look at the setup time and the um, lay, um, setup time is very low. This is a data from London Triker based on flexo printing of label, uh, labels for flexo and UV. If you look at the crossover point, it's around 50,000. For the flexo to be economical, I would say you need more than 50,000 50, labels to be printed. But if you look at the um, inkjet, you can say it is less than 50,000 is enough because of the um, setup cost. So if you look at direct product, where it can be, it can be here, but it can be better than this. Because if you can increase the speed, or and the image quality, the line can be better than that. So if the economics will get better if you can print direct to, uh, to the product without any label. So the demand is for high speed and high print quality. That means the drops you are rejecting need larger momentum. You must be familiar with this uh, um, slide. This is from Global Inkjet. Uh, Debbie already explained there are around 40 uh, factors which can affect print quality. I am just going to look at only the blue part of the uh, chart, uh, like print head and the waveform. The human perception of an image is subjective. So if you look at an image, you look at the sharpness, you look at the color and you look at whether the text is readable. But in quantitative terms, what you are looking is what is the property of the ink? What is the jet straightness you are getting? Is it wetting the substrate? These are the qualities we are looking in depth. Whether the text have any satellites. So if you look at substrate, I'm going in the reverse order. You look at substrate surface energy, it's wetting property. If you look at uh, ink, you look at compatibility, viscosity, surface tension, latency, reliability and stability of the ink in the print head. But if you look at the print head, you look at the personality of the print head. What is the size it can eject? What is the maximum frequency it can eject? Fire. Uh, um, and these properties are, you can control using the waveform. So I'm going to look at the waveform, how you can change the volume and the velocity. So ink and substrate, this is also must be familiar to you. This is a typical data for aqua, one of the aqua UV ink. You can see the surface tension is around 23.5 millinewton 
So in the chart you can see it's around, uh, if you look at, you need around 40 millinewton per meter to get a good wetting for the uh, substrate. As soon as you change the surface tension, the surface energy also need to change. So for KM products, we have uh, three different types of heads you can get depending upon whether it is a large or medium or a smaller. So if it is a large uh, in the print head, if it is 1024L, that means it can produce a 42 picoliter or a 30, 30 picoliter print uh, drop volume. If it is M, it is 12 or 13. Similarly, you can get for a S head, you can get 6 picoliter. So when you look at uh, image quality, high image quality means you need a smaller drop size. Smaller drop size means you need shorter throw distance. You will get only shorter throw distance. So the, there is a trade-off in image quality uh, with throw distance and the velocity. You, can, you have to choose the correct print head for specific application. That means for longer throw distance, you have to get jet straightness, consistent jet velocity and drop mass. So the drop volume and speed, how we can modify. That's what I, we are going to look. So for a KM print head, the drop ejection occurs when you apply a pulse. So I will call it as a waveform. So for a 1024IS head, for Acry ink, we can get 6.3 picoliter, but the specification is for 6 picoliter. So we get 6.3 picoliter. But if you apply a multi-edge waveform, we call it a snow dama. We can produce 10.4 picoliter. The naming concept came from Derma doll and the snowman. So it's a combination of the two. So what it's happening is when you apply a multi-edge waveform, you get two drops, one small and one big, and they combine during when they merge. And I spoke to Ono-san today uh, just before the uh, lunchtime. And the symbol here, this symbol means we will win. So I think we have succeeded in getting a bigger drop. So this is a typical data for Aqua UV ink. And you can see um, the acoustic length that is the depends upon actually the property of the ink. That typical data will vary depending upon whether it is an aqueous or it is a UV or it is water-based hybriding. And the volume of the drop can be controlled by changing the pulse length or the waveform length. This snow dama waveform we have applied to print labels. And you can see the left side is printed with a 30 meters per minute and the right hand side is printed with a this one is printed with a 50 meters per minute so with the snow derma we can almost get twice the speed this uh, snow derma waveform we have tested at Martin Enke uh, onto some of the plastic and the aluminium cosmetic tubes and you can see that you can see uh, the left side is for the tubes are printed at 29 meters per minute and with the snow dam it is printed at 44 meters per minute. The images are printed on a white uh, base uh, that is printed on screen, screen printed first and then the image is printed digitally with the inkjet. Similarly, the same uh, snow dama waveform we have uh, tested uh, again on aerosol cans. And you can see the left side is for a standard waveform and the right hand side is for snow dama waveform. With the KM uh, 1024IS series, with you, by using snow dama, we have a higher pumping capability compared to some of the other print heads in the market. <laughs> so in summary, the direct product uh, 
printing can be improved or the image quality and the speed you can improve by using Snowdama wafer. And Konica Minolta and IAJ are working uh, to develop a super droplet wafer, which we are hoping to improve uh, better uh, quality and speed. Now I'm going to show some customer applications. Um, I have to specify that these uh, customer applications are not done by Snowdama Wafer. They are done by DRR because the Snowdama Wafer is a newly developed uh, Wafer. Freem products. Um, you can see ear defenders. The curvature is more than uh, more than 3.5 millimeters, and the sponge is very porous. And we have successfully printed that. Polytype, I think Ekfa has already mentioned this. Uh, the, you can see the KM print head is uh, here. You can see the print gap can vary from one millimeter to more than six millimeter. And the, you can see the image quality is not affected. Uh, washing machine, machine panels, again, you can see uh, the throw distance can vary from one millimeter here to six millimeters. SMT digital, uh, printing onto perfume bottles and cosmetic containers. And uh, printing onto books, uh, this is actually um, printed top surface by offset and the site printed digitally. These are all printed digitally on the site. Then safety helmets, you can again see the print gap can vary from five millimeter. There is some air turbulence at higher speed. You can see it's causing some misting there, which is affecting the uh, uh, print quality. We are hoping that the slow derma waveform wave can overcome some of the uh, uh, misting uh, we are seeing on printing. These are some other products we have printed, uh, air filters, uh, uh, bottle caps, coffee bottle caps. Last uh, slide, I would like to show this is a 3D deco uh, print machine which can print 50 meters per minute uh, onto wood which is in Serbia. So, in summary, direct product decoration is highly desirable and with the snow dharma we have demonstrated that we can produce high image quality and better speed. Can I uh, show the slide please? I have uh, one video which we did for the 3M uh, digital. So that's the ear defenders. Thank you.